Hi, eighth graders, it's Mrs. Clear. Um, we are going to use the white copy of notes that you got in class the other day. This lesson is about solving inequalities. I think it's probably gonna be a review of some stuff that you did, but it's been a while. I would believe you probably did it last and I'm gonna guess sixth grade, okay? So um, if you have uh, that paper and something to write with, um, I am adding a visual for us of this number line to refer back to. And we're just starting with this statement that four is less than six. So four on our number line here, six on the number line here, and this less than symbol. I usually try to make a point to show that it's pointing to the left, right? Because four is to the left of six, right? So in our number line, those numbers that go to the left are going to be smaller, right? Okay, if we, let me see if I can shift this just a little. If we um, take this inequality of four is less than six, okay, and add four to both sides, showed right here, then the result of doing that would be eight, would be less than 10. And so the question in the chart is just, is that still true? Yes, eight is less than 10, right? So that's true. If we added negative four to both sides, so we added a positive, let's see what happens when we add a negative to both sides. We would get zero is less than two. And that also is still true, right? So adding a positive or a negative does not change the relationship between these numbers, okay? What if we subtract 10 from both sides? Result of subtracting 10 would be negative six being less than negative four. Is that still true? Now remember, my number line up there doesn't quite go that far, so I'm gonna put this up here. Yes, negative six is still to the left of negative four or less than, so that is true. What if we multiply both sides by four? Like this, we would get 16 is less than 24. And we hopefully know that that is true. 16 is to the left of 24. Okay. What if we divided both sides by two? All right, right there. We divide four by two and six by two. We would get two is less than three, which is still true. What if we multiply both sides by negative three? We would get negative 12 is less than negative 18. Negative 12 is less than negative 18. It's not true, is it? Negative 18 is to the left of negative 12. So here, we're going to have to say that this is false. I'm gonna use a different color here. Negative 12 is not to the left of negative 18, is it? What if we took four and divided it by negative two and six divided by negative two? We would get negative two is less than negative three. Now, it is negative two less than negative three? No, it's not, it's not to the left of it. So this also is false. So if we try to come to a conclusion about relationships, when we use inequality symbols, that if we had this statement that the left side and the right side of the inequality symbol, I could add a positive, didn't change it, add a negative, didn't change the relationship, subtract a positive, didn't change that relationship, multiply both sides by a positive, didn't change the relationship, divided both sides by a positive, it didn't change the relationship. When the relationship is changed is when we multiply both sides by a negative or divided both sides by a negative. Because we're saying it's the opposite and the opposite side of the number line 
is going to be on the other side of zero, right? So how do we keep this balanced and this true statement if we start off with a true inequality and we start manipulating it to solve? How do we make sure we're maintaining the same relationship when we do the same thing to each side, right? What we have to do then is, if we go back here, if we change this to greater than, negative 12 is greater than negative 18. Now it's true. If we said that negative two was greater than negative three. Now it's true, right? So if we're gonna summarize this, if we're solving an inequality and in that process of undoing on each side of the inequality symbol, I divide by a negative or I multiply by a negative, I have to remember to reverse or switch the direction of that inequality symbol. Hopefully you remember that, right? Okay, let's start that down then as our summary of what we're, what we just uh, came up with. I kind of wrote this so, so that it would be a little more succinct. So, ready? Uh, let's, I think we could run out of room, so I'm going to come up here. When solving inequalities, The symbol must be, I'm going to write this in red, reversed or switched if you want. The direction has to change, right? It has to be reversed after you multiply, so after multiplying or dividing by a, and I'm going to write this one in red too, negative. Not the best handwriting, I apologize. Number. Again, I'm hoping that that's just some review, but let's do a couple examples and then I do want to do a work on you because you're going to have that with your practice, okay? All right, so solve and graph. And you have this lesson about graphing with Ms. Faulkner already. Hopefully you did those in order. Uh, so for solving, we would simplify first by doing distributive property, right? So negative 6x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 12. All right, in my solving process, I'm going to put another pin here. Add 12 to both sides. All right, and what's left, remember this becomes zero. They're opposites. Opposites combine to be zero. Negative 6x is greater than or equal to 24. And then I'm going to undo multiplying by negative 6 by dividing by negative 6. And as soon as I recognize that I've done some division by a negative, I can change my direction. Okay. And now, negative 6 over negative 6 is just 1. 1x is greater than or less than negative 4. If we graph this, I'm going to put negative 4 right in the middle of my number line, and negative 3, negative 5, and at least that many if we're making our own number line, okay? And hopefully you remember that if we, from this blocker's lesson, right, that if we have an inclusive part less than or and or equal to, that I do a solid dot on that. And when x is in the front, it's showing us that relationship, that x values are going to be the left of negative four or less than that. So on that graph, I'm just gonna darken in and show my arrow, okay? All right, let's try another one. Here, um, I have an issue of the variables being on both sides. And so I have to decide what side I'm going to solve that on. Um, I think I'll take the x off of this side and this side. 
So this, again, opposites are zero, cancels out. And four minus five X and minus another X, this can be four minus six X. Now, subtracting a negative, I don't need to change the direction, right? Okay, I am going to get rid of the four that's with X over here by taking it away. Again, our opposites are gonna to combine to be zero. Subtract four from the other side. And again, that isn't going to change the direction of my symbol. Okay, but this goes away and I'm left with negative 6x, real common error to drop that subtraction. Remember to think of it as adding the opposite, right? And negative 15 and negative 4 can be negative 19. Hmm. I thought that this came out as an easy, a better number. Let's keep going and hope that I am right. Or we could do even better. I'm just going to pause this and make sure I've done, uh, haven't made a mistake. Sorry for the pause, but I figured out what my mistake was. I actually just copied my problem down wrong. I wanted this to be negative 14. But, you know, if you're cop I'm following along with me, we're just going to leave it. It's okay if we wind up getting a you know, a fraction, but it threw me up because I knew I didn't choose a problem that would give me a fraction. So, all right, thanks for being patient. Um, we are dividing by negative six on this side. We're going to divide by negative six on this side. Remember that that should cue me in, dividing by negative to switch the direction of my inequality. And I'm going to get x since that is now one x. And this is going to be positive. Um, and I'm just going to leave it because obviously 19 is prime and we can't reduce this, okay. I'm not gonna make us graph that one, okay. All right, the one thing I wanna close this off with is a word problem. And um, if you have room to show it over here on the side, that's great. If not, you don't need to, I just want you to probably just follow along, okay. So Mrs. Jones charges her music students $25 per lesson plus a recital fee of $50. How many lessons can you take? if you can pay no more than $175. Okay, so if we go through and just try to pick out the values in this, there's 25 here, 50 here, 175, right? We are asked how many lessons, how many lessons? So what I don't know is the number of lessons, right? So we're gonna have that be our unknown. Okay, and the cost you know, is going to be what depends on the number of lessons, right? So if this is our total cost, that's kind of going to be our Y for this one. Now, I have a couple keywords here, per, right, and plus, and no more than. So I know this per is going to imply multiplying and I know it's a rate of change. So I can start off with 25 times the number of lessons plus the $50 recital fee. It's going to be, have to be no more than, so it could equal 175, but if it can't be more than it, everything has to be less than that. It could be less than that though, right? Okay, so hopefully um, that's maybe the tricky part is just setting up your, your inequality at this stage. I'm gonna assume that solving it would not be a problem. We would undo the addition first, right? And then we would divide by 25. And dividing by 25 is not gonna change the direction. So the number of lessons that I could afford, that goes in there five times, I couldn't afford more than five. I could afford four and three and two and one or none, right? Okay, and then graphing that again, make sure, I usually just put that in the middle and then I start to put higher and lower numbers around it. And it's inclusive, so solid dot and anything less than that. So shade to the left, okay, okay. Um, you do have some practice um, for my class. You have the option of doing this on paper 
or there may be um, a digital version as well. Okay, I think it would be in Google Slides. So if you need any help, make sure you're reaching out to me or your teacher. Um, and I hope you have a good, easy time of it. If not, let us know. Take care. Be safe.